well, hello everybody. Uh, here I am. Uh, this is Steve Keeter, the Classic Comics Man, talking to you from the Classic Comics Man YouTube channel. Uh, Leonard, uh, Justin, and I, uh, we do a show called Talking Small Press Comics uh, over on uh, Leonard's uh, YouTube channel. We've up to, we're up to 50 episodes. We're getting ready to have episode number 51. Uh, we we're going to record it today, but we had technical problems and I need something to do. We're going to go back and record that show tomorrow, but in the meantime, I got a few comics here that we can still talk about. And these are comics that, uh, you know, we don't have time. Well, we, we don't even have space for so many comics, so we got a lot of stuff to review. And everything can't fit on that channel, and here we are on this channel, and let's talk about these, because these are pretty good, too. And uh, be before I get into it, uh, I want to uh, I want to show you this. You get it? That was my political mugshot. My political mugshot for today, and I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> Let's get right into some of this stuff here. I got something here. It's uh, from Glenn Baskin. And I know that because uh, his name's on the back cover, copyright, uh, this one was copyright 2019, so it's, you know, four years old, but still it's pretty cool. And, uh, and since he sent it, uh, sent it, I will uh, talk about it a little bit. Whoa, that's some pretty, uh, wow, what a cover. You know, a, it, it, you might say, well, it's kind of cluttered, yeah, but, you know, that's, that's sort of his art style to put as much as possible into one panel. Uh, he does great monster uh, illustrations. Absolutely, Glenn Baskin. Uh, look at this. This is really cool. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a scary, a decadent looking, uh, decrepit, disgusting monster if I ever saw one. Now, the story uh, somebody, okay, well, I guess uh, somebody saw this monster. Uh, and, you know, he's uh, a knight in whatever kind of armor. Uh, he says, and he's questioning because uh, he's been asked by apparently the king to kill it. I gotta kill that thing? And the king says, uh, uh, well, if you want the treasure and the hand of my daughter. And uh, so he shows him on the next page. And the hand of his daughter, uh, apparently his daughter's not around anymore, but they got her hand right here. The severed hand of his daughter is right there. And how could you not want that? Uh, slay the beast and receive the treasure and the hand of my daughter quite a powerful weapon and you know and the hero says oh and yuck um, so it goes on um, uh, what do we got here uh, somebody's uh, yelling at him um, yelling at the so-called hero uh, get up you lazy bum the magistrate is offering a prize of treasure in the hand of his daughter to the one that slays uh, the mountain monster and he doesn't want to get up and he's relaxing and he's like he's like you know just laying there trying to figure out how he got himself into this situation in the first place and he says uh, hmm if I marry the magistrate's daughter I can get the hell out of here um, so uh, yeah uh, and it goes on um, this infernal object there's no power in this damn hand uh, so it's apparently uh, controversial, and you know the, the people here—they're they're, all—it's it's kind of a you know, not the most beautiful sort of fantasy world you want to live in. Very gritty, very dark, and very grotesque. Um, so it goes on, uh, and let's go a little further here. There's other stuff. There's all kinds of treasures up for grab, but these are questionable treasures. My prince, there are tales of an item of great power buried within the ruins of Jarkot Village. And he thinks, uh, Jarkot Village? It was destroyed centuries ago. Now look at these uh, handsome, uh, beautiful, gorgeous people. And, um, but, power so much. 
hey, you, you, sh you will all pay, you know? That's for darn sure. I mean, the sordid forces, the horrific forces uh, in this uh, uh, fantasy world, uh, they are, I mean, it's not, the, it's not like your Cinderella Snow White world. This is some kind of other, it's not a fairy tale, it's more like a fairy horror story. Um, let's see. I need a curse, a curse of power that will bury Jarkut village. There is no price too high. No man will have my hand in the, unless I wish. And uh, this one says, oh, there will be a mighty price. You know, so if you want her hand, as opposed to the other princess's hand, which, you know, was you know, cut off and just kind of, they put it in a, you know, a box. Uh, well, I mean, what? These are your choices, and this in this grotesque fantasy land. I have done no ill. I will leave the village be. And another guy says, "I care none. I care for treasure, and hand the hand of his daughter for your death." No. And at the end of the story, I, you know, I mean, I personally was left uh, scratching my head. Uh, you know, what the hell? But uh, it's entertaining and uh, it's well illustrated. <laughs> Glenn Baskin is uh, quite an artist. Uh, this is really unusual stuff. Uh, gritty, dark, but not depressing. It's, uh, it's uh, actually uplifting in a way. In a way, a horrific way. Of, you know, what if life was like this? Wouldn't we all be looking for princess's hand in a box and uh, you know, surrounded by monsters and uh, questionable heroes would, would we not if if we were to choose another life would we not choose a life like this I ask you <laughs> now from Elaine Blanchett or uh, what, is it, what else does he call himself? Uh, Al Barrett. Um, he calls himself by another, came, another name. He's been doing Adam Man. Adam Man and a lot of other online comics. Uh, online. Uh, so this is a rare print edition. The uh, Adam Man Annual, uh, number one. Uh, uh, this features uh, heroes and monsters and stuff that's really offbeat, really outside the grain not so different from what we just looked at, uh, but uh, Elaine Blanchett has been doing this for a while, and it looks like um, what we have here, uh, Detector Hooker's assignment is to patrol in the city's park for a creature, and this stuff I believe is, uh, no, this is online, uh, you know, computer-generated artwork uh, that Alan has done, and uh, you know, here he is. He he decided to publish some of this and give us an idea you know, what it looks like on paper. And uh, well, there's a dark monster. There's a dark, uh, scary monster out there. The slime. He's out there somewhere. Uh, there he is. There's the slime. Uh, you know, you know, not someone you uh, you know you want your daughter to date or anything. You know, you know, not somebody. Uh, you know, you, you want to go out to eat with, you know, and then not 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 a not an attractive uh, fellow. But that's the slime. Uh, and meanwhile, uh, someone is is um, is uh, chasing after him. Someone uh, who is rejected by uh, the police force. I mean, he gets an encounter with the police force here. They're arguing with him, and here's our hero. This is the someone. And that would be Adam Mann in his civilian guise uh, up against the police as he's out there looking for this this uh, this you know, hideous monster. Uh, the police are stopping him. They're saying this is police uh, work, and you need to stay out of the way. Uh, yeah, in order that would be true, except the police uh, they really don't have much of a chance against this monster, but Adam Mann does. And so he attacks it uh, at one point here. 
There he is, to chap. Yeah, they have they have a fight, and uh, you know, and Alan uh, gives us a an exciting story. Um, and what happens here? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, one of the good guys has acid thrown in his face. We don't want this to happen to anybody, right? Uh, and you know, so you know, he's one of the good guys. So the other good guys are pretty much pushed to the side, while the monster continues and to wreak havoc. And uh, Adam Man uh, continues to come after him, and there is a fight. Boom! You know, pow, zam, whack. You know, big fight. A uh, big fight between Adam Man and uh, uh, the slimy monster who eventually dives into the catacombs, the sewers, under the city. Yeah, so he's a little bit of a phantom of the opera here where he's living in the catacombs under the city and uh, when Adam Man gets down there he finds a whole bunch of skeletons. Horror, he says. Uh, this is not cool. And they've, they've been wondering, apparently, uh, for a while, you know, what happened to all the people who've disappeared? Well, what do you know? bunch of skeletons under the city. That explains it. So, uh, yep, yep, yep. And let's, let's move forward here a little bit. As, uh, there's more people than this too. There, there's more, uh, you know, there's, there's, um, uh, okay. There's an evil, uh, scientist who looks something like Professor X here. There he is. Professor X looking a uh, dude. Uh, he's keeping uh, the slime monster under control. He says, as you can see, I am no longer a frail human. Not anymore. This has no importance at the moment. Now, the reason I wanted us to meet in here, Adam Man, is I wanted no one to witness this or to interfere. It's too important. Important. I came from far away to see you in person to make you understand the urgency of my quest. I need you to join us in the fight against our enemy. So even though this guy's a, a bad guy, he, but he kind of controls, uh, I think, the slime monster, but he wants to defeat the one called, you bet, Cosmic Man. Now, you know, I have also published a comic uh, called Cosmic Man over the years. I have, I have a character called Cosmic Man that my pal uh, Tony Lorenz illustrated, and uh, Jim Main, uh, published a number of the adventures of Cosmic Man and Pazit, and uh, in his own title, uh, we, we uh, Jim and I, uh, both published stories of this character. This is apparently, this is not the same uh, character here. Uh, but together we will put an end to Cosmic Man once and for all. Uh, now why is he after this guy Cosmic Man? Uh, I don't know. Uh, but uh, he, he's after him, and he controls the slime, and he's a bad dude, this professor-looking dude. Um, so, uh, it seems we have visitors, he says. Remember, they're in the catacombs of the city. It seems we have visitors. Perhaps a demonstration is necessary to convince you. These intruders will die. So out comes our exciting supervillain, monster, supervillain, monstrous uh, beast, and uh, he faces off against, uh, I have to read it again, but I'll tell you what, anybody that comes across this, uh, this uh, monster isn't very happy to see him, okay? And there he is, the monster, and uh, there's some battle, and there's a cave-in, and uh, we're getting uh, near the exciting climax of the story. Um, and if you think it's all over, I hate to tell you this, the monster's been buried beneath the rubble under the city, but you know how these things go. I hate to give away the last panel, but I can't help myself. Uh, there's a hand uh, digging up out of the rubble. The end? Like, who knows, man? So, yeah. So that was that one. Uh, what else we got here? Now I got something totally different here. This is from my friend Ken uh, Gierke. 
hope I pronounced that right, Ken. Ken Gierke and, uh, on uh, Vloggerheads. That's right, the the vlogging website Vloggerheads that was started uh, well over a decade, like 15 years ago, as an alternative to uh, YouTube, is still around, folks. Surprise! And this is Ken River Vlogger. We know him as, as Ken River Vlogger. He's a great guy, super talented guy, a sensitive guy. He's a poet, which is explains this because this is a book of poetry. Uh, and Ken does the cover too, which is really awesome, really outstanding and very beautiful. Um, uh, but Ken River Vlogger, uh, what can I tell you? He's been on Vlogger Hits for all these years, you know. Um, he, he calls himself River Vlogger because he makes vlogs as he pedals a canoe he paddles a canoe uh, down a river. Uh, he's done this in two states. And uh, he is, uh, you know, that's what he loves to do. And he's a peaceful, a wonderful, peaceful guy. Uh, he signed this one to me, Steve, find poetry in memories. A glass of wash. Now it's, it's an entire book of poetry, so it's not like a lot. It's not comic. It's not a comic book, um, but there's a lot of. He's so talented, and there's a lot of neat stuff in here. This one's called uh, a short one here. Out of the eddy, it says, "Drawn by avoidance, the peril of drifting, rudderless, becomes too real. The current, guiding me, resists." And possibilities unfold. Uh, this one is called Bridge. Rusting Hulk, immersed in traditions long abandoned, refusing to succumb, yet mindlessly adrift. Its stagnant currents, what toll to cross this bridge, pulling me down. And there is actually a poem called Glass of Wash. It says, edges smooth, rolling, tumbling, luster restored, in the wash of a lapping blue, kissing the sand as it rises, falls with each wave, tumbling again and again, nudged finally to be beneath the drying sun. From swaying reeds, a red wing remarks on its beauty, soon consumed by a frost, a reminder of each kiss found in grains of sand. And it's just lovely. I mean, the whole book is just lovely. This is something, you know, this is a comic book small press. It's available on Amazon. Uh, Ken Gierke, uh, there's his name right there. If you want to look it up, the book's called Glass of Wash, and uh, he is one of the finest poets I've ever had the pleasure to know or to read. Uh, uh, his wonderful poetry. Out of the rain, he wades through dusk, loss pelting him, when she approaches like dawn with its dew, a touch bringing a true rain, clouds retreat, revealing light as they part, for, as they part. forgotten colors once abandoned, returned to his walking gaze. That's really nice, it's really well done. Thank you, Ken, for sending this to me. I really do appreciate it, and uh, highly recommend it for anyone. Uh, if you want to know how to order this, uh, you can go to Amazon.com, or you can send me uh, a message uh, below, and I'll send you the information, or you can you, know, you can message me. All right? So uh, that's that, Ken Gierke. Uh, Torque Tunes from our pal Joseph Morris. He's a member of the UFO. He's incredibly talented. He's one of the funniest guys, one of the funniest, quirkiest art styles you'll, you'll ever come across. Uh, Torque Tunes, funny pages. This is like the Sunday funnies, but it's, it's his characters. Uh, uh, for instance, we have Coyote Coyote. Coyote Coyote. In this first story, um, what do we got going on? Wanda's Flower Shop. Coyote wanders in there and he says, and he's got a cactus right there. He's got a cactus with him. He says, where do you want this, Wanda? There's Coyote Coyote. 
she says, hey, Coyote, um, little Bill looks kind of bored. Could you go? She says, over there. Then she says, look, little, little Bill looks kind of bored. Could you go hang out with him? And she says, uh, so he goes over to little Bill. Little Bill's in the corner. Hey, little Bill, you want to go uh, run around for a bit? And he's, of course, quite excited by this. Woohoo! So, yeah, they do go running around. Uh, and, you know, I'm not going to read all of this, but uh, woohoo! Woohoo! Uh, woohoo! I want to be as happy as this guy. I want to be as happy as this guy, like every day, right? Uh, but they come across some smoke in the background that indicates something unusual is going on. Uh, they're off the side of a hill or something, and. Uh, it turns out there are crooks over there. Yep, crooks. Evil crooks. Um, so Coyote Coyote and Little Bill uh, build a trap for the crooks. The crooks fall down in this big hole. Uh, crumble. And this, folks, is what heroes do. Coyote Coyote and Little Bill. Real American heroes, folks. <laughs> Now we have the Dolphin Brothers, the Dolphin Brothers. Here they are, the Dolphin Brothers. Guess what they are? They are a couple of dolphins. Uh, so the Dolphin Brothers, yep, there they are, the Dolphin Brothers. Uh, they come up against pirates. And um, here they are right here. Come up against pirates. Um, as the Dolphin Brothers are the heroes and the pirates are the bad guys, guess who wins in this story? Meanwhile, uh, we have um, Uncle Pook. Uncle Pook. What's up today, Uncle Pook? Well, Winston Wolf, Winston Wolf, my boy, we're going to go over to the grove, the grove to perform a magic ritual to ensure a, a good harvest this year. And uh, so they do. And uh, yeah, there they go. Uncle, uh, the wolf guy. And there they go. And I'm not really 100% sure what happened here, but they wanted a magical harvest. And there was something magical going on here. Uh, but you know, this guy's kind of laid out on the ground. So the story has its own logic. That's Joseph Morris for you. Uh, there's a talent if I ever heard of one, if I ever knew one. And now at the uh, space convention this year, um, I was able to make the acquaintance of a guy who calls himself Paracel. Paracel. Now, uh, Paracel, I'm not sure what his real name is. I'm not even sure what his first name is. He does have a, a website. I looked on there, but I'm still a little confused. But anyway... <laughs> He has a character called Just In Time. Just In Time. Now, um, what's going on here is that, let's see, let's see what this guy's saying. Okay, Mr. Dunce, okay, there's a course. There's a hero course. Uh, let's learn about your powers. He says, shh, this guy says, the teacher keeps dissing me, this is irrelevant. The guy in the mask right here, right here but he wants to know what his powers are so he's being given a certain powers now there are a bunch of powers there's a list of powers there's like 12 powers here including speed shrinking hearing sight smell swim invisible invisibility strength he's able to fly feel multiply or uh, grow and um, uh, yes the, de the powers are demonstrated one by one in this strip. Um, it turns out he can use uh, one power at a time, maybe even a couple of powers at a time, uh, but only for a limited amount of time. And what we go through here is uh, uh, this hero, this uh, potential hero, uh, testing his powers uh, one at a time. Uh, for instance, here he is at the top, uh, testing his power of growth. So he goes from this size to this side, just keeps getting bigger. There he is. Uh, let, let's see. Um, okay, he completes all his deaths, his tests. And 
Well, that's pretty much that. Now, uh, the issue is dedicated uh, to uh, Mr. Justin Hicks. Now, I don't know, is this a friend? Obviously, it's a friend of Paracel's. I'm not sure if he passed away or, or what happened, but uh, Justin apparently is a great influence on a Paracel. And so he dedicates the issue to him. Uh, and the hero who's just testing his powers comes back in the next story. And he is just in time. His name is Just in Time. You see, he's got a J on his mask here. Just in time. Uh, you see Paracel's, uh, you know, he signed this here. Um, and uh, just in time, uh, he's like a normal guy. He goes up against, uh, you know, high school jocks uh, who are menacing him and, uh, you know, trying to get the girls and not giving him even a bit of a chance. Uh, but, you know, uh, just in time doesn't too, do too bad with the ladies in the end. And, <laughs> and there you go. So, and apparently there are a lot more of uh, uh, Papa Duck characters. Papa Duck characters. A character called Papa Duck or Popa Duck. Popa Duck. Uh, and uh, there will be many more adventures still to come. As I said, I checked on the website, uh, Paracel's website, and there's a lot of fun stuff there. Uh, okay, I'll let you guys go. Did I go on for too long? Well, I had fun. I hope you had fun. Um, don't forget, don't forget uh, your um, your um, political mugshot. It's important that everyone have one. And so remember. Thank you, and thank you for tuning in. <laughs> I love you guys. Thanks for following me and uh, on my uh, various channels. And uh, hope you'll check uh, the uh, Larned Justin's channel for the new Talking Small Press Comics show number 51. It should be up in a couple of days. And we'll see you then, folks. In the meantime, thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do subscribe. Uh, please comment on the video. Please click like and you know all that stuff that helps to create legends. I'm not a legend yet, but the only reason is because I need more of you to click like and subscribe and you know do that stuff. I love you guys and I'll see you next time. All right. Adios.